Good morning, everybody. Dave here. It is a very chilly, I don't know, it's about 28 degrees Fahrenheit here in Virginia. Beautiful, as you can see. But what I really wanted to show you today was something I've been working on for the last couple of years, and it looks like it's going to work. And this is an ancient uh, technique where you cut a tree off uh, real low. You can do it even all the way down to the ground. It depends on your purposes. But this is called coppicing. And what it does, it stimulates the uh, tree to uh, grow new shoots. And uh, if you're wanting to, you know, do a hedge, then you're going to make these cuts like this. You're going to leave a good chunk of the wood where, you know, it'll continue to carry the wood, the water and the sugars up to it. And then you put a stake in there. And this tree will keep on growing sideways like this. And you can have different types of trees in there. And you just attach it to the stakes and it will eventually create a hedge. Now you can make it low to the ground or any height. But for those of you that have uh, you know, a good chunk of property and carrying large 4x4 uh, uh, four four poles and whatnot and, and whatnot to create a, uh, a fence, this is a neat way that if you happen to have um, a lot of trees and different types of shrubs and stuff like that, to create a natural barrier. It can keep everything out from uh, large animals to even human beings. I mean, can you imagine trying to crawl through that mess? And this has uh, been used for thousands of years. It's very popular in the UK, the hedgerows and stuff like that. There's a number of videos that you'll see on YouTube, people showing different techniques of doing this. But like I said, you just cut it off, the tree off. You can go as low to the ground as you can get it. And... Uh, the next year it'll send these shoots up and even if you don't want to build a hedge you just want to uh, create a situation where it's firewood forever you could do that and by doing this this tree will uh, the age of this tree will become immense because it, it really uh, cuts it off in, a, in its uh, in a juvenile state but this is a really powerful hedge once it gets fully developed and you want to trim it up where all the shoots are, you know, pointing upwards. All the stuff down below, you want to trim it up. And all these little things like this, you want to trim those up. Make nice, neat cuts. That'll way to stimulate the growth again. And same way here, I need to make a nice, fresh cut there. You can see it's already starting to develop new shoots there. But this technique is quite old been used since the Roman times in the UK and I'm sure my um, friends from the UK can probably uh, share some uh, information on this my reason for doing this is uh, we have a lot of heavy winds here uh, eastern Virginia and wooden fences like this uh, they don't carry the load all that well get pushed over get a lean to it then break but uh, this hedgerow like this will add a lot of strength to it and as you can see, I've started a new uh, hedge thing here. This, these uh, two trees, uh, three trees really, these are post oaks and boxwood. Uh, ash, hazel, oak, um, boxwood, all do real good at this. But uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like uh, of part of a boxwood that I've been working on for a long time. You see a really good example. Uh, coppicing here. I cut this, uh, well, it's been a long, long, three or four years now. And you can see how it's uh, grown up and also the different shoots. And you just keep on doing this, man. And by doing this, you achieve uh, by working with the, the way that things growing. A really cool hedge, super strength. And this is uh, one that I really need to do more work on. And we'll do that. But, uh, trimming all this up. But this adds enormous strength. Defensing it keeps it for cows, pigs, anything else um, could cross. And like I said, for those of you that have a you know a lot of property, and it's just not feasible to carry a bunch of lumber out and dig holes and put man-made fencing up, this is offers a, a very unique, natural way of doing it. Another good uh, thing to have around is when you cut your limbs and stuff, you do your trimming ups, you know, save it. And you can make these where you can use these as post and uh, you know deadfall ads you know instead of spending money 
at the big box store buying a wooden post or metal post. Keep it all natural. You'll see a good example of coppicing here. Uh, I cut this off, I don't know, it was uh, maybe early last summer. And you see how it uh, has developed multiple shoots. And it gets a little thicker. You make your cut and you put a post down and start bending it like this. And you keep doing that. And before you know it, you have yourself a, the makings of a man made hedge. Well, organic man made hedge, so to speak, using all natural materials. And here's another example of it. I think I cut this one off, uh, well, I don't know, it was probably last summer. And you see what it's done. It's shot out more um, shoots. And eventually, you just like I said, they get a little thicker. And you want to make your scarf cuts. And start that bend. All right, you see some younger branches here that uh, I sheared off, uh, I'm wanting to say probably the end of summer last year, and they've already grown up this much. But here's an interesting uh, thing to look at. This even uh, happens in larger stumps that you uh, can cut. You can see where new shoots are starting to grow. And if you let this go, and start making those scarf cuts, bending them over. You'll have yourself a natural organic hedge. You see just how fast this stuff grows, man. Like I said, it's called coppicing. A lot of videos out there, mostly from the UK. And this has been done since Roman times, as far as I know. All materials made right from growing in the ground, guys. Dave out. All right, I think I'll spend a good chunk of the day uh, starting to deconstruct and realign some of these old pallets, man. Y'all take care.